Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we're going to attach our propulsion unit to our station and see if the ion engines can work during time warp. Very important, otherwise there's really no point. And I only have a couple of ion engines that are configured to work with time warp and uh, KSP Interstellar's implementation of uh, applying thrust during time warp. So we'll see if I've got this right. I'm going to launch it manually since we have to rendezvous with the Mars transfer vehicle. And uh, while I do have a launch script that can handle rendezvous, uh, I'm not 100% confident with it yet. I used it for the Gemini missions in the mission profile series, and that was fine. But in general, I, I, I haven't tested with other rockets except for Titan, so we'll see. Anyway, ignition. launch. So it's a Sajita Heavy. I initially wanted to send up a tug with this module and uh, that would have been much more convenient and do it on a Super Heavy of course. We'll need the extra capacity but the fairing just didn't allow for it. We didn't have enough space and you'll see why once I remove the fairing once we get to the proper altitude. We really must stop destroying our launch structure. <laughs> So of course, Kerbal Space Program 2 has been announced, and we are all very excited. I am especially excited for visuals. I mean, what I want most is that we it looks good, because I make videos, and it looking good is important to me. So I want inspiring videos, okay, of space, very artistic videos. So yeah. We'll see. I mean, I'm in no rush. But I'll have to learn how to program plugins for Kerbal Space Program. There's no avoiding that. Once we get the fairings off, I'll describe the ion engines that I've configured here. They are based on real ion engines. By the most powerful real ion engines I could find. <laughs> Not surprisingly. Oh, I'm worried about the Delta V here. Uh, that's not reading right. I think we've got an extra methane tank here. I'll explain that too. Yeah, now the Delta V is reading a little bit. It's still a little bit high, to be honest. Okay, booster set. Okay, fairing separation. So, um, at the top here, we've got a little truss that needs to be used to um, hook up the tugs in their proper place for transfers. So that's what that is. The tug will grab that first and place it. And then the rest of this is the actual propulsion unit. First of all, we've got a propellant module based on the other module, the docking module that we already have on the station, slash Mars transfer ship. And I, I thought I locked these. Okay, now it's not even... Oh, I locked these. That's okay. I locked the wrong thing. That's fine. Now the numbers aren't looking so good. No, oh, we're in trouble. Oh, it pumped this. Oh, jeez. Okay, we'll let it take fuel from this. It was only supposed to be half full. <laughs> um, what this is is the tugs, you know, don't have MLI layers, so any fuel would boil off in them. So this is supposed to be used to store the fuel when the tugs aren't being used. Or not independently. As long as they're hooked up to the station, they can draw the fuel from the propellant only docking port. So that means we don't have to carry as much stuff with MLI layers, the uh, insulation layers on. Okay, separation. Nozzle. And enable cross speed. And gonna need to uh, pump fuel from up there in. Yeah, let, let me just set this to be used first. That's simpler. Okay, so the ion engines. Well, what they are is each of these is a cluster of 10 X3 ion thrusters. And these are real ion thrusters. Uh, they, at their maximum output, they would draw 125 kilowatts and produce 54 newtons of thrust. But 
because we want to optimize their ISP, we're actually throttling them down by uh, to only 10%. So we're we basically thrust limited them to 10%. So all 10 of these ion thrusters in this block combine to produce 54 newtons, but that allows them to get better ISP. The ISP rating we have on them right now is 3,280. I believe in 2013 they were tested to 2,600 seconds ISP. Hopefully they have improved on that. I'm going with 3,280 um, as a reasonable improvement on those numbers. And that's what we are expecting. So, and then we have three of these units. So a combined, what, 162 kilonewtons. And because we're thrust limiting them to 10%, that means combined all 10 will uh, produce a grand total of, uh, which, uh, will draw a grand total of 125 kilowatts. And then we have three of them, so that's uh, 375 kilowatts, which is our solar panel should be able to do that around Earth, and then we'll have to throttle them down around Mars. But we'll, we'll see. Okay, that's good enough. I also added RCS ports to uh, this module, as well as our ED3 vernier engines. But it looks like I've made a mistake on that, because the feed pressure is too low. This is not a service module tank. <laughs> I forgot about that. This not I mean it's not a service module tank here either. Because it's feeding this gas generator engine. So the mass of each of these modules is the mass of ten of these X3 ion engines, which you can look up. Uh, each one is about two hundred kilograms, so each of these units is two tons. But it's worthwhile in terms of its propellant consumption to make sure it's not um, at the lower ISP setting. In general, if you increase the thrust from an ion engine, you decrease the ISP. Well, it looks like I should have waited a little bit longer before starting out. I don't want to take too much time. We've got Delta V here. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Uh, we're on electric charge only, no solar panels, and I slapped on some extra KW rocketry battery units. I like those. Well, it would have been nice to use the Vernier engines for this bit, but no such luck. We might have Kerbals grab those and just get rid of them. Depends if they work when we... well, when, once the tugs are on it doesn't matter. Depends if they work without the tugs attached at all. The truss is not very heavy, so the fact that it's lopsided a bit doesn't matter too much. I had to put it this way so that we could actually decouple it. Remember, I'm having trouble with my own docking ports decoupling, so this is, happens to be a NASA docking system here, so at least that one can separate off from the rest of the thing. Unless suddenly that docking port has that problem. The good thing about having these heavy ion units in the tail is that the artificial gravity situation is much better since they're at the extreme I wish I had put some sort of end cap on here but that's extra mass the truss was heavy enough already for what it's doing and yeah end cap would be extra mass though it would make it look better I don't like the sort of and you know unclosed pipes sort of look going on there okay render range taking a little bit of time this time okay 411 meters this sounds good to me so after this uh, we still have one more launch, and that'll carry the remaining adapter units for the tugs, and one more tug, the last of the tugs, which of course double as our orbital maneuvering system, so we need them. And then we'll be all set. But as soon as we hook up this propulsion unit, you'll be able to see how much Delta V we have, which will be interesting. 
Incidentally, uh, these parts are Lackluster Labs parts, but I configured them for Realism Overhaul and I made them a very specific kind of thing. The propellant name is wrong. Obviously, it shouldn't be liquid methane. Um, uh, but we can't switch it to xenon gas until we have xenon gas, so we'll wait. The reason it's on liquid methane is because that's what we've got. Okay, well that relative velocity indication keeps flickering between 260 and occasionally 150, 160. This is annoying the heck out of me. So you know what, I'll, I'll just I'll just leave it right here and we'll get a tug out here. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. We are not rotated right. Is it super important in this case? Probably not, but... Let's see, let's see, either 90 or 270. All right, and we're going to put this particular one on the front end of the station. So there are a total of four of these mounts that we need to attach for the four tugs. A little bit of extra mass to the vehicle, but you know, overall, I think we're pretty light. So this truss is actually from Lionhead Aerospace. Don't know how I managed to get that in here, but <laughs> uh, apparently that's what it is. LH is usually Lionhead. I mean, I selected the mods, you know, for a specific purpose. Get why I put line head. Maybe it was for the trusses. <laughs> Maybe. They're nice looking trusses. Hope that Lynx doesn't get in the way though. We could move it though. We could move the Lynx to the docking port on this side now. If necessary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dock this docking port onto there. And that'll be the permanent position for this tug. Yep, everything's matching up. Good planning in the SPH, actually. And let's move the tug to its proper place. Uh, might be clear, might not be clear. We'll see. Okay. Well, we don't want to control the whole s structure from there. About to say space to, uh, station, but it's uh, it's a Mars transfer vehicle, darn it! Oh no! Wait, that no, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh god! The trusts undocked from that side. Why did I do that? I don't know why the Lynx is using its thrusters, and that's also not right. Oh, that's tough grabbing things when they're so close to each other. Mm. No, 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 no. Oh! Thank goodness we've got enough magnetism on this. <laughs> okay, I don't know about our relative uh, rotation. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, we've got it again. Gosh darn it. Okay, station, why do you have to puff? Just hold steady without puffing. Okay, back on. Jeez. So, I don't know how I got that wrong. I want to undock here, right? And this is the one I want to undock. Undock. Okay, that looks like the tug is undocked. Very good. Right. Okay, tug, come on. Control from here. Back away. 
Gotta be super careful with all this hardware nearby. It looks like the links will be alright. So now it will be using its thrusters to retro burn should that be necessary. If we need to very quickly do a burn in this direction. We do not want to have to turn the entire thing around for that, of course. Okay, connected. And now we're going to send out this tug to grab the propulsion module. Let's see. This is going to be fine, I think. Uh, we can grab it at that docking port to dock it in. It should be relatively balanced, I want to say. Not horrible. Well, that, uh, that bit has floated out quite a ways. Nope. Oh, we lost communication temporarily. Yeah, that probably won't last too long. Okay, uh, that's not really pointed at the target. Smart ASS doesn't know that until we get within 200 meters. So I'll just manually adjust here. There we go. That's better. And before I forget, I'm going to pump some of this fuel up here. Oops, I have done the wrong thing. Hold on, hold on. We don't want to grab it from that docking port at all. No, it's this docking port that, or one of these, either of the, either this or the other one on the other side that we want to go for. Whoops. And in order to do that, we're going to have to ignore the fact that our roll is going to be wrong. Um, well, we can force roll in the wrong way. That's fine. So close your eyes. It'll only be temporary. Originally, there was supposed to be a condition where the modules wouldn't dock like this, but I couldn't get that to work. Okay. We've already done the propellant transfer. I'm going to decouple this off. And we are going to have this retro burn. Or right, retrograde is good enough. I uh, left too much in here. Probably torched that a bit. Okay, now we have to bring this back over to the Mars transfer vehicle and dock it onto here. Now, where did that go? Uh, there it is. Okay, looking pretty good on approach at this point. And it's felt reasonably controllable from this control location, though with the minor faux pas that uh, some of my thrusters are, of course, aimed at the payload. Then again, you know, it's it's shielded and it's a fuel tank. Hopefully, it's it's okay. They're they're small thrusters anyway. Okay. Uh, they seem to be rolled right anyway. So we'll get this into a slightly higher orbit using the ion engines just to test them out and then we'll launch the the adapters for the tugs and then the last tug. So there's four tugs all together and we need three more adapter trusses. Okay, we are in sunlight. I've turned off the extra engines. We are heavier than we ought to be because we are carrying the Lynx spacecraft there. Though, um, well, we would have some sort of lander there instead, so it's about, the, about right. We read 12,000 meters per second, though some of that is the methane and oxygen. You know, I mean, we would want to deplete the methane and oxygen here, uh, for instance, and I'll unlock that now. 
and technically we would detank the tugs but we're still using the tugs the only tug we're not using is um, this one this one is in its proper position so I'll detank that right now and that's that I'll have to remember not to undock it without fuel though but that'll prevent boil off from it and yeah so we need to point prograde and let's see it turn with uh, the tugs doing most of the RCS work of course it's not perf oh we need to make sure we're cr uh, controlling from here control from here now right now because prograde is sort of sunward we're not going to get optimal sunlight but that's that's all up to KSP Interstellar to sort out. So right now it is reading a uh, theoretical supply of 536 kilowatts and a current supply, as you see. That's that's what I expected. So uh, for a little while it seemed like it was double, but right now it's looking what I expected because uh, from these we get about 80 odd kilowatts a piece. And if you do the math, that's a little bit more than 160 per set. And so a little bit more than 480 kilowatts altogether. Uh, plus, we've got solar panels on the control module and on the links right now. So, yep. Uh, it is looking proper. And right now, aimed directly at the sun, we're only getting the front panels. So 160 kilowatts. And then sometimes it angles so that some of the other ones get some. Okay, so the thing about the KSP Interstellar system is it won't bring us a time warp on the nighttime side, but it'll automatically throttle down the ion engine, so it won't deplete the electric charge on the nighttime side. Okay, can, you can stop rotating now. I didn't ask for... I guess I should just specify a role so it'll just stay somewhere. On the bright side, as, as we use all this methane and oxygen to roll around and orient, we are actually increasing our delta v <laughs> right but yeah we, we could we could stop that now sometime anytime now i don't want to turn on the ion engines until we can turn off the rcs and we will let uh persistent rotation handle it we're going to have relative rotation not to the sun but dynamic which means it will focus on our prograde vector as we cycle out now, because on the nighttime side, we're not going to be using the ion engines, that means that on the nighttime side, we're not going to be lifting our orbit very much, or at all. And that's good. I mean, that means that uh, we are going to have one end that's closer to the Earth and the other end that's further away. Which, uh, But in the end, it's not going to be, like, ideal. Right now, when you figure it, you have to figure about 6,000 meters per second for Earth exit, and then probably another 6,000 to capture. I don't know how much I'm going to budget. Uh, it's it's going to take a lot, and this might not be enough. I'm thinking I want about 18,000 meters per second altogether, at least. But we'll see. This may end up getting stranded at some point. But here we go. Uh, that's done. SAS on and we are going to RCS off and throttle. So note our apoapsis and periapsis as we do this. That's not the best sound ever. And see, it's automatically um, managing the utilization depending on how much power we get. So instead of ha having their full power output, they'll do whatever they can. It says 69, I, I don't know, whatever, whatever it does, it's still Newtons and it's still really raising things very, very slowly. So I'm going to start time warping and we want to make sure that the electric charge, uh, okay, so where's our xenon gas is getting consumed, uh, electric charge is staying stable, and our apoapsis and periapsis are going up. And we continue focusing on prograde. It should always stay on prograde. 
and now it's getting full power. Oh, oh, if it keeps warning us about Loon Sats, it'll take us out. That's not good, obviously. We're going to have to ignore the Loon Sats and all for this to work. But right now, it looks like it is, it is working during Time Warp, as we hoped. And off during, uh, well, unless, yeah. Uh, during the nighttime side, it is not doing anything. You can see the apoapsis and periapsis staying stable. Our power is being consumed because of internal systems. And then daylight all working well again. Lifting our orbit further. You can see the 128 days uh, to actually make use of all this 13,000 meters per well 12,000 meters per second actually with the ion engines the other thousand is the methane and oxygen okay well it looks like it'll work so we need to get the rest of the business up here And then we need to get the Kerbals back down, because if we lift this orbit through the Van Allen belts, we do not want the Kerbals on board when we do that. Okay, so here we go with the final tug, as well as the tug adapters, three of them. I've had to add a stack separator because of the docking port issue. My docking ports don't like to separate from each other when they're connected in the VAB for some reason. So I've added a stack separator between one set of them. I couldn't figure out how to stack it uh, safely otherwise, so it'll just have to be that way. Uh, well, I think seven degrees I can manage. All right, throttle up SAS is on ignition. And launch. Strictly speaking, the Sajita Heavy has way more than it needs for this, but I decided to go with it since the last launch was already one and I just took the payload off, put a new payload on, and went with it. Okay, and booster set. Fairing separation. So here we go, we've got our tug here, and you'll see uh, we've got one of my docking ports, rounds only docking ports, attached to this stage because the stage can decouple from it. And then on the center line, the tug has a NASA docking system which can separate off from that androgynous propellant only docking port. And then at the top of the of the tug. We also have a NASA docking port, so we can use that with the propellant only docking port, hopefully. And then uh, I have to, I had to have the stack separator in the midst of these two because these are both the propellant only docking ports and they seem to be sticky. The stack barely fit into that largest fairing of ours. something suspicious here. Um, I don't know what that is. Okay, I think that's a stack separator perhaps. Okay, the closest approach distance is getting better. Okay, well, that's as tight as I could make it on the periapsis side. We're sort of in the middle of that right now, so we can't adjust very well. So there should be a nice opportunity to adjust at an ascending or descending node. Yeah, uh, that descending node will allow us to lift up our orbit as well as correct the inclination. We have plenty of spare delta V, mind you, so that's why I would consider that. Oh, uh, we depleted some from over here. Let me... Once again, forgot to lock that. Oh, wrong way. 
Okay, well, I've impatiently brute forced my way to our target. We've got a close approach distance within the render range of the Mars transfer vehicle, and after that, the tug will handle everything else and we'll deorbit this. So, just one more burn to kill the relative velocity will do the trick. Still got plenty of delta V in here, of course because it was sort of OP for this particular mission. Let's unlock this fuel now and decouple. Right, and this in point retrograde. All right, that'll deorbit that. Right, now this business, which is going to be interesting. Let's just control from here, I suppose. We actually want to deliver the first two trusses to the back. Currently we're targeting the front of it. We do need to get the other tug off. Because it's blocking one of the docking ports. Okay, we'll just keep that clear for now. Thyrate, oh, that's a different one. Okay, let's see. Empty slot on that side. Okay, we have to roll over. Mm, that doesn't make much sense. Hold on. Maybe I should be on the other side then. Nope, it doesn't matter. I mix something up anyway, so we'll just roll this to where it needs to be, which in this case is zero. I really need ship manifest in here. We'll probably want to be able to dump certain things at certain times. So it's sliding around a bit. Let me just turn that off. Well, there's magnetism. Don't tell me I do have that. Oh, there, there we go. Don't tell me I do have the thing where it's not a dock if it's mismatched. No, no. Okay. Well, this is unfortunately where we have to use the stack separator. So we're going to have a bit of debris very close to the station. Maybe we'll have a Kerbal come out and deal with that, I don't know. Okay, what way around are we? That's there. Well, it's wrong strictly, and it's, it's totally wrong. Okay, good. So this one will end up matching properly eventually. So yeah, on this side the propellant only docking port is oriented properly and everything is good. It's just that one hopefully. Hmm, that's on the inside. That's not supposed to be like that. Well, shucks. We might have to get two tugs to figure that out. Yeah, we need to flip this one around, <laughs> but let me deploy that one to the correct location first and then we'll deal with that. So where we want to go is over here now. Okay, well, this is the right orientation. Okay. All right, let's get that one truss that's not quite positioned right. So here, decouple. I guess I can potentially maneuver that one truss just with this, but it'll be tricky. Hmm. Oh, I don't have control. I was wondering, why is it not doing my things? And that is because we don't have control. 
Yeah, I mean, there's an option to attach to that docking port right there. But I think the xenon tanks are in the way. We'll just go for this docking port. So we'll have to grab this, have the other tug get the other end of it, release it to the other tug, and let the other tug dock it. That's the plan. Otherwise, the place where the tug has to dock to there is too close to xenon tanks, so it's not a usable adapter. I wonder where that stack separator drifted off to. Um. Okay, come free, please. Ah, there's that stack separator. Well, that's a little bit far to EVA to now. Okay, we need the other tug finally. Where is that fluid off to? There we go. Okay, this is not actually the right rotation. Oops. Oops. Okay, uh, right. Which which one is the right one? Um, <laughs> I think we want to decouple this side. Okay. I think we can see the port we want to hit. That's not a xenon tank I'm, t I'm aiming at. What the heck? Well, anyway. Can we set anything up there as a target? Well, like, uh, okay. Yeah, well, that is what we want. So next time, the first order of business is bringing the Lynx spacecraft down with the Kerbals, because as this spirals out, we don't want them on board, collecting a whole bunch of radiation. And then we'll see. Then I guess we will spiral out. Whether it's the right time to do that, I don't know. And seeing how much fuel we use spiraling out, we'll decide whether to A, top off the xenon tanks, or B, add another one, you know, just add a third one in, might be an option. Okay, that is good, and let's Undock this tug and then redock it where it needs to be. Uh, not you yet. So this tug actually goes right here. And that's why we needed this on this side and not on the inside, otherwise, it would be tough for this tug to dock right there. This seems correct. Oh, I've done so many camera movements that it's all messed up. Okay, that one's docked. Okay, let's get that wayward one, and then the one out of place up front, and that'll be that. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sort of forgetting how big or small everything is. Okay, no, 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 no. Up, 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 up. Worried about the xenon tanks and the... And the solar panels. But they're, they were huge and we weren't that close to them. Still, it's all a tight fit. Okay, back off, back off.
All right, those two are in place. And finally, the last one, this one that's hanging out on the bottom here needs to move up there. And then we'll be done for the episode. This will all be configured properly. Okay, moving forward. Okay, last little bit here. Don't you wiggle, stop wiggling, stop wiggling. Oh, come on. You know you want to magnetize. There we go. Okay, so that's all the things. We are now, let me make sure the front front ones have their uh, thrusters pointing. Retro, yeah. Make sure those are shut down for now. Yep. Yep. Now, of course, they provide RCS as well. Forward ones. Let me shut this one down for now. Okay. Right now, we only have the ion thrusters. And, well, after all of that uh, use of propellant, we are actually lighter than we were before. <laughs> we were 250 tons, I seem to recall. But, yep. It's all assembled. And next up, I mean, unfortunately, we diminished delta V because we've just added some more structural mass to the thing. But that is what I wanted it to look like. And we will deal with the Kerbals next time. And we will spin this up to a higher orbit and perhaps deliver. Well, probably not next time. I won't deliver our payloads for Mars, but maybe the time after that. We still have before the Mars transfer. Uh, 335 days. So we've got some time to figure things out, including whether we need to refuel this and whether we need to expand this. The nice thing about this whole setup, of course, this is supposed to go back and forth between Mars repeatedly. If we decide to, we, sh we can add some more propellant units. We could even add more of the ion engines. We could see a potential for having five of them, if necessary, for some reason, if I'm impatient. Uh, so yeah, well, here we are. So with this, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.